Pete Docter has made four films, all of which fall under the Pixar studios. I've decided to torture myself today by ranking all four of them. The reason I say that is because I actually really like all four of these movies. They all fall in my top 10 Pixar films of all time, and so to rank them is pretty hard, but that's what I'm going to attempt to do. I do want to throw that out there though, because before you guys all complain about one movie being ranked below another movie, I want to remind you, I love all of these movies. I'm just saying which one I love the most. Now you'll notice that when I rank these movies at the bottom right of each screen, you will see what your ranking is. Before this video was made, I went on Instagram and asked you guys to vote for your favorite Pete Doctor film. Every time I show one of my rankings, I will also include your ranking with that same spot. So my number four will include your number four down to number one. Coming Coming in at number four, I have Inside Out. Amy Poehler playing Joy is Tom Hanks playing Woody, Ellen DeGeneres playing Dory tier level. Her voice was made to play Joy. It probably helps that Parks and Rec is one of my favorite TV shows and I consider Joy to be an animated Leslie No. This is actually a fairly complex Pixar film, one that successfully appeals to all ages. I love the underlying theme of true happiness that is found within Inside Out. In order to experience true happiness, you gotta experience some sadness along the way. Something that I love about the director Pete Dawson Doctor is that he is amazing at throwing these really deep messages into his films. In my opinion, Inside Out teaches us about what true happiness really is. My number three pick, however, teaches us all about love and adventure being out there. I love Up. From the opening newsreel on Charles Muntz's adventures to the final shot of Carl's house on Paradise Falls. It's such a zany plot, yet it totally works. You've got talking dogs, super strong helium balloons, whatever the heck Kevin is. Do we, do we still not know what he is? And it all works together so well. Within the first 10 minutes, you are emotionally invested because man, Carl and Ellie's story is beautiful. I love the idea of having an adventure book. I actually have an entire book dedicated to my life's bucket list and it is so fun checking an item off the list when I complete something. Open it up, it's like, Oh, cool looking. It's just an entire book for me to make my own adventure, to go on my own adventure. And it's so fun to have. I recommend that everyone has some sort of an adventure book of their own. And I can't move on without mentioning Michael Giacchino's amazing score. It won the Oscar for a reason. He not only elicits so much emotion through the theme of love and loss, but he even does it with adventure. He recently tweeted out about the score, Married Life, and said, I'll never forget after we had the orchestra play it for the first time, and then second and third and fourth. Everyone in the booth had tears in their eyes. It was hard to work. Even the composers had tears. And speaking of really touching endings, let's talk about my number two. It goes to Monsters, Inc. The movie that holds, in my opinion, Pixar's greatest duo, Mike and Sully. The duo that makes me laugh when I watch them and care about every moment they have within the film. I've been talking about how Pete Doctor's movies, they all seem to have a deep underlying message within each of them. I actually think that Monsters, Inc. is probably the most accessible of all his films. Now that's not to say that his other films are not accessible, I just think that Monsters Inc. is easier to understand what its underlying message is. Monsters Inc. centers around friendship. It hits hard on this with Mike and Soli, but arguably even more with Soli and Boo's relationship. They broke the mold. They made it acceptable to be friends with humans even though humans were considered monsters at the beginning of the film. The voice acting is amazing. John Goodman and Billy Crystal, thank you so much. You're amazing. Don't ever change. Boo and Sully's separation is so sad. I get major chills every time I watch their goodbye and even more chills when he sees her again at the end. Also, just a fun little fact for you, this movie is the earliest memory I have of seeing a film in the theaters. So I guess you could say it's the first movie I ever saw in theaters. It was actually an awful experience. I had a horrible sore throat while watching it. I remember we had to actually leave the movie early. It was when Mike and Sully get banished. So not a good experience that day, but uh, Hey, I love it today. <laughs> and my throat feels better. And one more quick thing. For 2001, the animation in Monsters, Inc. is amazing. Like, have you seen Soli's fur recently? But my number one has to go to Soul. Pete Doctor centered on my favorite message of all four of these films living. Soul accomplished what I thought was impossible, being better than these previous three masterpieces. I loved every bit of Soul from the opening where we hear the orchestra playing the Disney theme 
to the very final shot where we see Joe Gardner deciding he's going to live. There's not one flaw or problem I have with this movie. I love the message of 22 going to Earth only when she decides to live. She has to want it. She can't just go to Earth. It's when she wants to live. I also love the theme of enjoying every minute of your life. The animation is absolutely beautiful. In fact, I could look at this animation for hours and not get tired of it. Joe's epiphany scene towards the end of the film is one of my new favorite movie scenes of all time. That's not even talking about animated movies only, just movies in general, Joe's Epiphany, one of my favorite movie scenes of all time. I haven't been able to stop thinking about that scene. Soul hits me hard, especially when I compare it to my own life. This movie made me rethink a lot. I felt similarly after finishing Soul to how I felt when I first saw It's a Wonderful Life, which, mind you, is my number one favorite movie of all time. So it's a pretty big deal. I have seen Soul three times in the two months that it has been released, and I'm not tired of it, and I don't think I can get tired of it. Not only is it my favorite Pete Doctor film, but it's one of my favorite films of all time. And I gotta call you guys out, you ranked Soul at the very bottom? Come on! I'm, I'm just trying to convince myself that the only reason it's ranked as number four for you guys is because uh, you haven't seen it yet and you're more nostalgically attached to the other three films. That's what I keep telling myself so that I feel better about it being number four. But on this guy's list, it's number one. <laughs> Get out. Let me know what your rankings are below a Pete Doctor's filmography. I know that you guys as a pool voted for your favorite films from him, but I want to know what your individual rankings are. You can comment them below and I will check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.